Hey, hey, it's Kat. Hi, I'm Kat Wilson. I'm an artist. Right now, my work is hanging at Crystal Bridges between an Andy Warhol and a George O'Keefe. Yeah. Hey, listen, it took a long time to get there. The story of Habitats starts in 2002. I'm an art student. I like to hang out with the sculpture professor. We, uh, we go have lunch together often at school. And he always kind of, you know, gave it to me pretty straight. He was like, Kat, you know, uh, a lot of artists don't really consider photography a real form of art. Whew, I just spent four years in a dark room. So, you know, it's pretty tough to hear. So, yeah, I graduate. I go into the world. I realize I'm really good at conceptualizing, but I'm not great at my technical skills. I hadn't really honed in the craft of photography technically. So I started assisting different photographers. The whole time I'm thinking, what's going to be my big art project? What am I going to do? And so, you know, as I'm learning to be a better technical photographer, I start thinking and I said, I'll just go back to the basics of art, back to what I learned in art history class. So one thing we learn in art history is we learn about iconography. Do you guys know what iconography is? It's the symbolism in art. So a candle could be out and a little bit of smoke could be coming from the wick. And that means the presence of God. Shoes by the door, that could mean the woman in the portrait is pregnant. Fruit could mean fertility. So what I was going to do, or what I do, is I'm going to take portraits of people and I'm going to put their stuff around them. And that's going to give you more information about who they are or who they want to be. So I got my iconography down. Then I think about lighting. How do I want to light my subjects? OK, I want to do it really dramatic, very Renaissance. Oh, uh, wait, no, not Renaissance, Baroque. I'll do what Caravaggio does. Caravaggio does what we call a chiaroscuro. It's a very dramatic one source of light. And he's from the Baroque, by the way, not the Renaissance. And uh, so now I have my lighting. And then I think about how is my composition going to look? Let me go ahead and give you my first slide here. Uh, my composition is going to be a triangle. And why the triangle? Because in the Renaissance, we had the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we also, the triangle is very sturdy. It's hard to push a triangle over. But what's neat for me to use it as is I can control your eye. I know your eye is going to follow that triangle when you look at my photograph. So the last thing, how am I going to have the sitter sit? Well, in the Renaissance, only kings and queens and noblemen and Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost got their portraits painted. So I wanted my sitters to look heroic. I wanted them to look kingly. I wanted them to look important in their portraits. And so a lot of people ask me, well, how do you choose your sitters? And I think it's best for everybody to just think of habitats as one big self-portrait. Because the people I choose to be in my habitat photos are the people that have surrounded my life. And as my life's changed, the people and habitats have changed. So I'm not going to show you the pieces that are hanging in Crystal Bridges. You've got to go there yourself and see them. Oh, I should say, so this first one, this is the very first habitat shot in 2004. That's me in the center, my two best friends on the side in Little Rock, Arkansas. This is my sister and her husband, and Jack, who's now a teenager. Um, this is my dad and his two best friends. Uh, this was just shot a few months ago. It's a local gal and her son. This is the boy that was in the first habitat. He's getting a little older here. You can see the original habitat in the back. And this is just a few months ago. There's now three boys. Jack's in the center. Habitats isn't the only art piece I've done in my life. Surely you've heard of my super famous emoji painting series or my layer series, which is, you know, I take a subject and I shoot it from every angle and I put it together and it magically looks like a painting. But what I want to talk about is my newest, newest, newest art project called Warrior Women. And I love the story of Warrior Women so far, and it's still working out. I just came up with it a few months ago. So I tried to uh, film a TV show pilot just, uh, let's see, last January, maybe? It was called The All-Inclusive Show, 
a show for artists, but you can watch too. And it bombed. It didn't work. I really thought it was going to be the next big show on Viceland. It didn't happen. And so I'm sitting in my studio. You know, they always talk about failure being, well, you can't, you know, failure is such a big part of art and stuff, but man, it feels terrible. And so I'm sitting in my studio, and I'm sulking, and I get a phone call. I'm already down, okay? I get a phone call, and it's this guy. He's a fine art photographer, and he says, Cat Wilson, I don't think that you're the best fine art photographer in Arkansas. And I was like, I'm a southern girl. I was like, oh, yeah? Who do you think is? You know, and then, of course, he names all people I know who are my mentors, and it's embarrassing, and that was his way of asking me to be in the show he was curating. And I hang up the phone, and I, I was mad. I was like, why did I let him say that to me? And, uh, you know, time goes on. I get a phone call I, the same week from Cody Ford. Cody Ford has an art magazine called Idol Class. He said, Kat, we have a photo issue coming out. And uh, we were thinking that you could do a spread for us, curate a spread of fine art photography. I was like, no problem. So me and him worked together, and I think we came up with a really edgy, contemporary, really boasts a lot of good, fresh talent for the magazine. And he said, how about you do one of those self-portraits you like to do so much? I was like, no problem. So I knew exactly immediately what I wanted to do. And so I got this really neat uh, neighbor at my art studio. And she's an artist, and her studio is next to mine. Her name's Trisha Gooding. She's an activist. She's witchy. She's fearless. And uh, she'd been making costumes for the local theater troupe, uh, Artist Lab Theater. And so I knew that she had the skills for what I needed. And I said, uh, Trisha, can you make me something that looks like Athena or a Greek goddess or something? And so she does. And uh, she comes up with this. That's a revenge titty, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll explain why. So what we have here, I went ahead and queened myself queen of photography. And that's a scepter. And a scepter, you know scepters. You've seen it in Egyptian uh, works. And it means all-knowing knowledge. I know a lot about photography, ladies and gentlemen. And I queened myself, as you can see. And I went ahead and put my titty out just to remind everybody that I've had to work extra hard as a woman to make it in the art world. So this happens. People like it. They think it's funny. It, you know. And uh, I think, I don't know, the world gets real crazy real fast. Mind you, this is just, I think this is March. Wait, this isn't very long ago. And uh, the world gets crazy. The, I hear about women getting raped around town and people squashing it and not believing them. This is before Kavanaugh and Ford. Uh, the president is grabbing pussies. Uh, life is tough for a woman right now. We need armor to make it in this world right now, right, as women. So I decided to come up with a series. And uh, do you guys read your Chani, Chani the Horoscope? She said it was the year of collaboration for me. So I hooked up with Trisha, and I said, what if we went out and talked to women, and whenever they had a hard time in their life, it could be 1982, and a woman could have been a single mom with three kids, and she was having to you know, lost her job or whatever, whatever the style of clothing she was wearing during that time, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to give it to Trisha. And Trisha's going to transform that into armor, into warrior wear, so that woman's ready to take on the world. And I'm going to photograph it. And I'm going to use a diagonal composition this time. The diagonal composition came about during the Baroque era. Because during the Baroque, we started to see more individual portraiture. The neat thing about the diagonal in composition, it's ready to fight. It's ready to go to battle. It's ready for movement. And so, lo and behold, Warrior Women comes. I know I'm going to oh, lighting. I'm going to light it holy like almost. I'm going to shoot the lights in through the windows like a cathedral when, when stained glass has sun shining through it. And so we came up with our first subject. This is Stephanie King. Stephanie King went to the same high school as me, but she's a little bit younger than me. And uh, you see, I'm a lesbian. But in high school, there was no way I was going to tell a soul. But this gal, she's tough. She went in and let everybody know. And they punished her for it. They uh, gave her a hard time. You know, they teased her, bullied her. And during this period of time, she, you know, she's a 90s girl, so she's into her 90s clothes. She liked roller skating. She really liked Tank Girl. You guys remember Tank Girl from the comic books? The movie came out in the 90s. 
And so this is our first uh, warrior woman. And, you know, we're still working. It's a brand new project. But I'll go ahead and invite you guys to get your phones out. Because on November 6th, I went ahead and photographed one of Trisha. So get your phones out and go to catwilsonartist.com. And you'll get to see the brand new warrior woman. I photoshopped it today, as a matter of fact, and put it on my website for you guys to see. And ladies and gentlemen, my hashtag for warrior women is tits out. And thank you so much for listening to me, because I love it when people have to listen to me. <laughs>